guys and welcome back to another video. So today, as you can see by the title, I'm going to be doing a big old Q&A. So I went on Instagram and asked you guys basically what you wanted to know all about the British Army and about military generally, about my experiences, about where I'm at so far, what I'm going to be doing going forward, thoughts and feelings. And today I am going to answer them. The first question, which I feel like is appropriate to answer that I actually got was, what regiment stroke role are you in and why did you choose it? So I am in the reserves at the moment. I am a CM and I chose that because I had worked in a hospital for a year and a half prior to like doing this role and I'm studying medical ethics and law at university I wanted a role that was very medically focused so it made sense to just pick that one that's the only one that's really hands-on on the ground doing things with the troops that's like in the medical field okay so what is the accommodation like in basic training is the next question Essentially, it reminds me of university dorm halls. There are some really great pictures online that you can find if you type in the training center that you're going to. And also there's some good YouTube videos that people have done uh, at basic training and showing you what the accommodation like is like. I don't know if it does vary between training center, but from what I've seen, it's essentially single bed, like shelving or wardrobe units around the bed or next to the bed and then that's pretty much it and then obviously you share a room but that the number of how many people you share with depends on where you go so most excited about during basic training is probably going to be meeting new people getting stuck in being able just to experience all the different elements of knowing who you are as a person and putting yourself through those hardships and knowing that you're actually going to be going through an experience that's going to help you grow as cheesy and trite as that may sound and also just all the fun things that you get to do and all of the new skills you get to pick up and learn and that's what i most look forward to at least looking forward to is sleep deprivation i think i'm the type of person that needs at least nine hours every night i can probably function on six or seven but I'm not a morning person if I do so if someone snores or obviously we're gonna have like you know very short um, sleep nights and stuff like that yeah that's gonna be tough for me not looking forward to that at all okay how long from when you did your assessment to when you started the training so for the reserves I did my assessment on the 10th of December and then I started in the reserves uh, and I was attested at the end of January but it would have been quicker but I had exams so I had to push it uh, and then training, I mean, again, it can take a while. It just depends on the regiment you're in, the unit you're going with, like what role you want to do. It can be anything from three months to, you know, a year or something. I've heard multiple different things. And then with the regulars, again, it depends on what role you're going into. I've heard crazy things like for RMP, there's a year waiting list. For my role, there's a nine to 10 month waiting list. Like, <laughs> it really just depends. But that's not to say that you won't be able to do it quicker than that. Like there are little loopholes where if someone drops out of training and you could just drop everything and go that you might be able to go quicker but basically for my specific role yeah it will take a while from when I do the assessment to when I get to go uh how fast did they reply to your application I mean literally so quick with the army like you submit the application online and then instantaneously they pretty much say okay can you fill out this form and that form and medical history and stuff like that and then you'll get a call within a few days or, or a week depending on where you are from a recruiter saying okay here's the next stage of your application how's progress it's it's not like other grad schemes or other jobs that you'd apply to where it takes a long time they're bloody on it like with the army so just submit your application ASAP and yeah they'll be pretty quick with it what are certain things that take a while to get used to when you're in the military do you know what <laughs> this is such a good question um, probably one of the things that jump out to me the most is when uh, you do drill and when your first parade night or your first like time of doing drill you will know that that's like a big culture shock a big shock to the system because you've got to you know bang your feet down and all the saluting and it, it makes you feel like oh wow this is like I'm in the army now you know whereas up until that point for me personally it was a lot of classroom based stuff and I didn't really it didn't hit me until that and you know you've got to be like yes corporal and you've got to really project your voice out and get you out of your comfort zone absolutely immediately yeah it was drill so for me you do get used to drill but uh it did take me a while to get used to all the banging and and shouting and saluting and to be fair saluting i still find it so awkward i think that's probably a general thing some people do find it awkward then having to say you know people's rank as well that's something it takes a while to get used to because especially when you know people well in, within your regiment even if they are a superior you just want to be like oh hi but you can't <laughs> you know when you're there you've got to be like hi corporal hi sergeant yeah having to remember that when you're in a conversation with someone and all the formalities i'd say is something for me that takes a while to get used to but everything else really I think if you're the type of person that's disciplined turns up on time 
and wants to do well, be switched on and be polite and courteous and get stuck in, then to be honest, that transition will be pretty easy for you. Next question, with being in the reserves, obviously it's part time, how exactly does it work? Well, basically within the reserves, what happens is you have drill night every Tuesday nights and that's like a national thing. It's from seven till nine and that is where you go to your battalion or your unit or wherever it is and you're in the training process or in your career. Basically, when you are there, you will have a first parade, which is when you will, you know, get in ranks and you will greet the officer or the NCO there and they will tell you what you're doing that day. And then you might be able to do PT or drill or something like that. And then you have a final parade, which is where you go back in ranks and then and you you know salute off the NCO or the officer and they basically say you know good work for today and then normally we'll go to the pub <laughs> that's pretty much the Tuesdays of how it looks and then when you go on course which is your basic training in the reserves days will be normally over the weekends but you can also do consolidated courses you know and they'll be like a week or two or three weeks long depending on what course you want to do and then once you've passed all of your training in the reserves essentially it is just the drill nights every Tuesday and then you get to go and do you know, deployments or further afield stuff or weekend trips and things like that. Any tips fitness wise to train before joining the reserves? Oh, lemon hell, I got loads. I would say the best video to watch, and I'll put it here, was my fitness video that I made about how to get fit and how I got fit to pass the army assessment center. I would say, Pretty much, joining the reserves, in my head, I just trained as if I was joining the normal army. Granted, you do have to be, I think, a bit fitter joining the army because of the expectations you're gonna face of 14 weeks of basic training. Whereas in the reserves, you do have that luxury of a bit more time of once you pass you know, your assessment center, then you only are going there once a week. So even if you do PT every week, you can solely have that time to improve rather than being in basic training and being like, day one okay you need to be this level so you know that's something to like bear in mind but i would say yeah pass train to pass the assessment center keep your training varied like running wise long runs medium runs sprint runs aim to like do hit workouts that hit all of the body whether it's abs arms or legs and like do recovery stuff as well whether it's yoga or like like in walks and things like that and also tabbing is a great thing like i go for a lot of tabs i mean it's not like a, none of this is like a prerequisite for joining the reserves as long as you pass the assessment center you'll be fine but it's also just something if you're big into the fitness that you can do. Okay, what is something that you are most looking forward to once you've completed your basic training in the regulars? I think it's just getting stuck in and going to like a company or a unit and being like, okay, you can build those connections with people then and you can feel like, okay, this is my career and I'm actually got my feet stuck in now because I feel like, well, I guess a weird analogy is like, you're constantly running on the treadmill trying to get where you wanna go, but you're not quite there yet. Whereas I can't wait for the day where you can turn the treadmill off and just go out and go for a run and actually be like, oh, I'm in my career now. Like this is the trajectory of what I wanna do. And I'm actually like, living it whereas a lot of what i've been doing so far whilst i'm at university obviously i can't commit to anything because i'm still studying it's like i i've loved being in the reserves but i just want that full time and i'm constantly craving that like i'd love to do this all the time and i'm just can't yet i've got to wait um so yeah once i completed basic is just yeah the feeling of this is my career and this is something that i want to do and making connections with people and having all the opportunities that you get in the British Army. Uh, what are people like generally? This is actually a really popular question and then like, what was it like to fit in and did you find you had to fit in and things like that? Do you know what? The people generally, and this goes for saying of all the people I know in the regulars as well as the people that I know in the reserves, bloody lovely everybody is so nice and friendly and i think it probably stems from the fact that we all want to be there we've chosen to be there we know what we're getting ourselves into we're very like-minded people because you know people who join the british army are pretty much interested in similar things to do with fitness and getting stuck in and being outdoors so you have that to bond over and you know it goes without saying i think that like in any group of people there's always going to be ones you probably don't get on with or that you don't vibe with or you might not like but me personally i haven't found that every single person i've met I've really liked as a person. So I didn't really feel like there was a fitting in moment. I pretty much just get on with everybody there. I don't, and I would also say it's probably helped that I made the effort to talk to people. Like when, as soon as I got there and then you'd go in and there'd be little groups of people talking, I would be fine walking up to people and be like, hey guys. Whereas if you didn't do that and maybe you would find it harder to make friends, but that's, 
not limited to the army that's literally goes without saying about any area of life you just have to get stuck in talk to people they won't bite your head off they'll be fine would having a paramedic degree or a medical degree help you become a cmt i mean it will definitely help you in the role but it wouldn't help you become a cmt you don't need any formal like higher qualifications to be a cmt you just need gcses so if you think that you need a university degree you, you don't advice on how to choose a specific job or regiment i think it is a difficult decision of when you go online and you see a hundred job roles and you don't know which one is best for you to pick. I personally was lucky in that I knew exactly what I wanted to do and I wanted to do something medically related and then whittle the job list down like that. But if you don't have an inkling of an area or a discipline you might have studied before that you want to pursue, then the best advice I have is know what type of job you want, whether it's an officer route or whether it's a soldier route, whether you want to be in the reserves or the regulars, filter those through on the website and then basically click on all the roles and read them and then see like, okay, could I see myself doing that? Could I see myself doing that? And a lot of the roles you'll probably be able to bin off quite quickly because they're so different you know it, it'll be very difficult to be interested in them all but yeah I would say read them all see which ones jump out to you and then when you go on the British Army YouTube page they have uh, short videos for most of the job roles so you can watch those videos and watch the interviews of people in those roles and you can kind of get a feel for like can you see yourself doing that and I would say yeah like once you've decided as well like what area you want to do is it going to be REMI is it going to be AGC is it going to be uh, AMS is it infantry light infantry what do you want to do like where do you want to be as well you'll be able to pretty much pick a regiment and a job role from that oh there are so many questions about the ac um and how i trained for it again the video i'll put it here about when i did my ac how i trained originally i'm going to remake that video too for how I'm training for the AC this time around, now that I would like to believe that I'm fitter <laughs> and uh, my new goals and stuff that I wanna achieve when I go to the AC. Um, so yeah, basically any fitness tips for the AC, um, watch that video and I'll bring a new one out. But also, all the fitness stuff that I do, I put in my marathon training diaries, which are all on my YouTube channel, which are basically consolidated workout videos of two week periods and I chuck it all into a video and that's basically everything that I'm doing fitness wise and I share it with you guys. So I think watching those will give you an insight in the type of training that I do. How do you feel about having to redo the assessment center? Do you know what? I was initially thinking that like, oh, I don't wanna have to redo it because it's like jumping through another hurdle. But then as soon as they said that like, okay, you know, you're definitely going to have to redo it. I was kind of committed and I was like fine about it. I was like, at the end of the day, it's one day of your life and hopefully I'll go to a different training center. So I'll have a like look around there and it'll be able to compare the two experiences. And as well, it gives me an opportunity to go back and improve on the things that I wish I did better net like last time. Like for me, the run I think last time was 8.3, 8.4 and I wish I did better, I regret it on the day. And this time around, I want the opportunity to be able to like prove, okay, here's the fitness standards that I was at and here's where I'm at now, like I'm committed to this and I wanna just prove to myself that I'm capable of more. So with that in mind, I'm pretty excited about it actually. It was gonna be for a few months I would imagine before I get to go and do it because I've got to obviously do my medical forms and things like that before I can do the assessment center, but I'm looking forward to it. Okay, uh, how to increase your bleep test score for the assessment center. Do you know what? I'm gonna make a whole separate video on how to do the bleep test, how I do the bleep test, how I've improved my score from a 7.5 to like high end nines. Okay, so my final question is gonna be your biggest advice to someone about joining the British army. I would say my biggest advice is if you're thinking about it and you can see yourself doing it and it doesn't matter if you can see yourself having a 10 year career or doing you know the four year sign on period whether it's in the reserves whether it's in the regulars I would say just go for it it's something I wish I did sooner and it's given me a complete mental shift in the way I view life and the way I think about things and I'm really enjoying my time doing it. I would say if you are committed to then putting your application in and you wanna do it, be all worried about like how to train, how to get fit, all that type of stuff. I would say as long as you're disciplined and you're committed to what you wanna do and you genuinely wanna push through in those moments where it's gonna be difficult to improve your fitness, like when it's 6 a.m. and it's splashing it down with rain and you need to go for a run and you're lying in bed thinking, oh, I don't wanna go, you have to force yourself to do it and trust me, it will be beneficial. You never regret going for a run. So um, yeah, you just have to kind of commit with that in mind, knowing that if you're gonna go into the army, there's gonna be hardships, 
but it's all for your own personal development. I think when you view it through that lens, you don't see it as hardship so much and you kind of can get into the enjoyment headspace of doing all these things for fun. <laughs> Make sure you choose a career path that's right for you. Don't do something that other people are doing or you think looks cool. Do something that you definitely think suits you and that you really enjoy. And you'll get opportunities no matter what sort of specified role or regiment you go into and just have fun with it really you know if you want to do it no one can stop you so you should just go for it and do your absolute best and don't hold yourself back don't make excuses just crack on do the best that you can and honestly I've loved my time so far so I reckon that you know you will you just sort of need to know what you're getting yourself into and be prepared for that but once you go in with that headspace I think you'll absolutely like be able to get the most out of that situation so um yeah that's probably my best advice for someone joining the army if you want another q a like this where i answer questions about military british army or if there's something that i haven't been able to answer in this video then you can comment below and i'll probably do another q a over my instagram and make another video like this uh, in the future i hope you like this video i'll see you guys in the next one i'll see you guys next time bye mm -hmm.